Senator, thanks so much for being with us, sir. Good to be with you, Rick. You know, um, Abdul Matullah must... I, I guess when you look at it on its face, this guy probably should have been on that no-fly list, right? I mean, that's what Americans think. I imagine that's probably what you think as well. Well, certainly, uh, by all accounts that we've heard, uh, he should have been on a no-fly list. And we're obviously, we'll do hearings uh, getting uh, down to the bottom of this. But I, I think there's a, there's a much bigger issue here. And that is, uh, if you go back to pre-9-11, uh -huh. we had problems with our intelligence community. We, we know that. There were all these stovepipes. Uh, and agencies didn't talk to each other. Uh, and we didn't even know about some, we didn't even know, for instance, about KSM's uh, network. Uh, we didn't know about the whole uh, in so, Southeast yeah, and, Asia. And, and guess we didn't what? know it's, all those It's things. happening again. That's, that's right. But here's one of the big reasons it's happening. One of the reasons we weren't attacked over the last you know, eight to nine years is because we have actually been capturing and interrogating uh, these terrorists and, and the top ones so that we get information about uh, new types of networks that are being set up. Well, this new network that was being set up in the, in the uh, Arab Peninsula, uh, mm -hmm. we didn't know about that. And that's one of the reasons is, is because for the last year, uh, we had stopped capturing and interrogating uh, these these high value targets uh, we have to not, not only that, that two of the, not not only that but two of them uh, uh, according to uh, several reports actually had been released yeah we, we no had detained them at one point released them and then they got over there so look th this is a tough tough situation isn't it uh, especially yes. trying to get a handle on the situation in Yemen at this point it is Rick but there are some there are some common sense things I think we need to do as Americans uh, and, I, and I would encourage the Obama administration one is to change his policy on Guantanamo Bay I think it's absolutely mm. foolish I think that uh, the Bush administration uh, you know releasing some of the people they did they made a mistake I think it's a huge mistake uh, that we close mm. uh, Guantanamo Bay that we release some of these people that they're scheduling to release because because the easier ones are already released, and the ones that are going to be released, you know, scheduled to be released now, are, the chances of them going back and, and getting into a war against us are much higher. We are in a yeah. war against radical Islam. We have to understand that, and, and we have to use all of the tools necessary. Interrogation. We have to use all of our intelligence tools. We no, have to use no question. our you military. Make, everything that we can do, along with homeland security, to keep our country safe. You make a good point, and, and as a member of the committee, it's certainly uh, something that we know that you've been looking into listen I gotta ask you this question um, since this is your first formal interview on CNN it behooves me to ask you and look I, I know this is a very difficult thing for you and I, and I appreciate you being on here and, and 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 doing this interview and I know you've always been uh, as much as you can be an upright guy but you're under it seems to me that you're under and let me ask you the question are you under an investigation right now by the Senate Ethics Committee and or the Justice Department well, you know, we, we, I'll let the, th those folks speak for themselves. You know, Rick, uh, I've been dealing with health care reform. Uh, my state has over a 12 percent unemployment rate. We have two wars going on, these latest right. terrorist attacks. There's so many other bigger issues. I've commented all I needed to comment on those kinds of things. Well, you know, I was but, elected but, but to do a on, job as on, a senator. Hold on, hold on, hold on. i got to stop you there because if there's a possibility here, l let me show the viewers what we're talking about. This is a picture of you and Doug Hampton. This is from uh, the New York Times website right here. And, and the question has to be asked, Senator, did you help him get a job because you felt bad for him or because you had been sleeping with his wife and you wanted to get him out of the way? L listen, Rick, I've commented all I was going to comment on that. And, and I, uh, we, you know, we told you when we were going to come on here that that I'm going to be focused on health care. I'm going to be focused on the economy. Uh, my state is hurting right now as badly as any state in the country, and I'm focused on doing everything I can to help Nevada. But, but, the pro uh, but here's the problem with that. That's what I'm going to focus on, I'm not going to answer no, your questions. You I, can ask it all the ways you want to ask okay, it, but I'm I, not going to answer but, your but, questions. But, but here's the problem. There is a law that says that someone who is an aide for a senator like yourself has to wait one year before they start lobbying. There's reason to believe, Senator. In fact, there's a lot of reason to believe here that Doug Hampton, who was your aide, was lobbying within that one year. If that's the case, sir, that's an illegality and something that you owe an explanation to your constituents about if you had any involvement in either that lobbying or helping him get those lobbying gigs. Right, Rick. That, first of all, that's his problem. That's not my problem. But at the same time, I'm not going to answer any of the questions. 
because I'm focused on doing my job right now. All that stuff will take care of itself over time. We've said we will cooperate uh, with any investigations, and, uh, but at, at this moment, I'm just going to focus on, on being the best senator that I can be for my state. By the way, you just said, though, that that was his problem and not your problem, but doesn't it become your problem if you arranged meetings for him to A, get those jobs, and then B, set up meetings after he had the lobbying jobs with people that he would be lobbying? Would, Rick, wouldn't that wouldn't that wouldn't that kind of in link you somehow to this? Rick, I know you want to get into this, and I and I've told you before that I've I've spoken all I need to speak on this, uh, and everything will take care of itself over time. Uh, I no question. I've made statements uh, in the past uh, that I will fully cooperate. Uh, have in the past, will continue to cooperate uh, with any uh, investigations uh, that go on. But I really need to just focus on doing my job. Uh, we, uh, Rick, there are some serious problems. Some people are really hurting out there with unemployment, with health care. Uh, we, we, this health care uh, debate is one sixth of the economy. I'm going to be going out around my state doing town hall meetings, uh, trying to raise uh, awareness of what is in this bill. I believe this bill is terrible for the country, and that's what people in Nevada keep telling me that they want me to do. Is they want me to focus on doing my job, and, and I that's think what that's, I'm going to do. Well, and and I think that's important, sir. But I but I also think that as citizens, we do get a level of frustration when we see any kind of malfeasance from the folks like you who represent us and it just seems that it's fair for a journalist to ask a standing senator of the u.s. senate how he would explain to his constituents and here is your opportunity to explain to them how it is that you were in a situation where someone who worked for you a year before they had been out of that office or out of that job started lobbying and Rick I've answered, I've answered those questions all you have to do is go back to my statements I've answered all of those questions and all of the, the no question in my mind when all of the investigations you know go forward and everything that will be, be, be proven to that exactly what I said did you, uh, did you I arrange, did nothing did, illegal did, I did nothing did, unethical did you arrange and that a will be that did, will absolutely be proven well you're saying you said see but now you're bringing me back in you're saying you've answered all these questions I'm not sure that's true senator Go back through the records and did see you my statements did you set up a meeting arrange a meeting for Hampton to meet with the new transportation secretary Rick go back to my statements you'll see exactly what I've said on the record mm-hmm and go back through them. If you'll, if you'll do your research, you'll see that my answers have been very clear and we will cooperate uh, with any investigations that come forward and in the end, there's no question well, in my mind, but in the end, everything will be answered in its fullest. We will cooperate and, and I think, uh, you know, based on the facts, uh, that, that uh, the mm -hmm. Ethics Committee would clear me and, I, and, and, uh, and I'll be, uh, be able to go on being a senator. The New York Times reports that you reached out to the following people about hiring Doug Hampton. Maurice Gallagher, Jr., CEO of Allegiant Air. Bob Andrews, a financial industry executive. Sig Rogic, a prominent Republican. And consultant Paul Steelman, who is a casino architect and developer. And Steelman says, and just answer this if you could. Steelman says, he tells the New York Times that you, quote, you mentioned Doug Hampton and asked if the developer might have business for him as a lobbyist or a consultant. Did you meet with Steele and ask him to get Doug Hampton a gig, a job as a consultant? Rick, uh, I'll applaud you for your, uh, for your efforts, but I told you before, uh, I have answered the questions that I'm going to answer, and, uh, and I go back right. to my statements uh, that, that I have done noth nothing ethically or illegal in this matter, and in the end, it's an absolutely, uh, we feel that we will be completely exonerated. It's my job to ask the question, sir, and I thank you for appreciating my persistence. And, uh, Senator, uh, I wish you the best of luck. Thanks for coming on, sir. Thank you very much, and Happy New Year. All right, likewise. I'm not a crook.